To continue following this tutorial, we will need two Python libraries installed, and these are PyQRCode and PyPNG. If you don't have them installed already, please open command prompt if you're using Windows and simply install them using pip, which will be just pip install PyQR code. And then do the same thing for pip install PyPNG. Uh, you're welcome to run this from the terminal in VS Code. It will do exactly the same thing. Um, I already have them installed. Um, so once you do and you're ready, let's continue to the actual Python implementation of the code. So what we will do is we will begin with importing the QR code object from the PyQR code library. So from PyQR code import QR code. Perfect. Now I will be creating a QR code, which when scanned will take you to the text version of this tutorial in your mobile device browser. So let's create a variable and call it dust. And here we need to pass, for example, some link in a string and I'll pass the link to the article that I wrote. Uh, PyShark.com is my blog where you can find a lot of my tutorials. The link will be in the description and you're welcome to check it out. There's a lot of interesting stuff and I tend to post quite often. Now that we have the destination that we would like to reach from the QR code, the next step is actually creating the QR code object that will contain this link. Um, so to do that, let's call it myQR. And we will have QR code and pass destination as an argument to it. Now, what ends up happening here is that this URL goes into this object and it generates a QR code. Now, what we want to have is we would like to see it as an image. So how do we do that? That's where the PyPNG package comes in handy and we can easily save this QR code as an image. So myqr.png and here we need to come up with some name for our file and let's for example call it qrcode1.png and have some scale for it, for example 8. Now what scale does, scale is a parameter that essentially adjusts the size of the QR code PNG and you can adjust it to increase or decrease the size of the QR code image. So now the code is ready. Let's try to run it and see what we get. Okay, the code ran successfully and we have the QR code PNG created right here. Now you can see that we just generated the QR code for the link that we had. Um, you can go ahead and test it with any smartphone. So uh, I used my iPhone and it should take you to the URL of this article. If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, turn on your notifications and stay tuned for more programming tutorials. The section before showed how to create a simple QR code without any specific adjustments. In fact, the QR code has several parameters that actually just take the default values if they are not specified. However, if we want to add some customization to the QR code, it is worth discussing how and what we can adjust. So when we created our simple QR code, we simply use this line right here. In fact, there are multiple parameters that are left at default settings, which I will type out now, and then we can discuss them as well.
So let's begin with discussing all possible parameters of the QR code object and discuss what each of them does. So the first one right here would obviously be our content and in this case the destination link that we would like to reach. The second part would be the error or the error correction level of the code. Uh, by default it is set to H which is the highest possible level. Uh, the next one would be the version and version specifies the size and data capacity of the code. So it can take an integer value between 1 and 40 and when left unspecified it will find the smallest possible QR code to store the data that we want, uh, obviously knowing its size. The next one is mode and mode actually specifies how the content or in our case the destination link will be encoded and there are four options. Uh, there is numeric, alphanumeric, binary, and kanji. So if it is left unspecified, it will be guessed by the algorithm. And if you tested the previous code, you probably figured out that the algorithm predicted it to be a link and opened it in your Safari browser if you were testing it on your iPhone. And the last one is encoding. And encoding specifies how the content will be encoded and it defaults to ISO 8 in our case. Now you can play around with the uh, initial code and tune the WAF parameters to see how the differences will be presented in the final QR code image. What is interesting is how adapted the smartphone algorithms are for QR code readings. In other words, when scanning these with an iPhone, its QR code decoders will know right away which app to use for each content of the QR code. To test this, let's try creating QR codes for a URL, address, and phone number. So to get started, so far we only have one destination, which is the URL. So let's replace it with a list, which now includes a URL a physical address, and a phone number. What we're going to do now is we're going to loop through each entry in the list to create an individual QR code. So we'll rewrite some code here. We will create a QR code for each of them and create a unique name when saving them as a PNG. Let's call them additional QR code. And add an index from the list. and set the scale equal to eight. Great. So what this loop does is it goes through every entry in the list, creates a unique uh, QR code and saves it with a name plus the index in the list. Okay, wonderful. So this, creates and saves three QR codes. So now each of these, when scanned by an iPhone, will be identified by iPhone's QR code decoder and apps to open them will be suggested automatically. Let's take a look at the first one. So the first one is actually the URL. So when you scan it with your iPhone, you will be prompted to open it in Safari. The second one is an actual address so you will be prompted to open it in Apple Maps. And the third one is a phone number, so you will be prompted to open it in phone and call. 
If you pay attention, an interesting thing to notice is the sizes of each QR code. Essentially, the way to think about it is the longer is the content that you're trying to store in the QR code, the larger will be its size. So if we compare, for example, QR code 2 right here, this is the phone number with, for example, a URL. You can see the difference in size right away. And if you go to the code, you just compare the length of the string. Definitely you see a big difference, hence the changes in the size. To conclude, everything we've talked about today is the process of creating QR codes and saving it as PNG files using Python. It should be a good foundation to understand the process and have the knowledge to build on the functionality. Feel free to leave any comments below and let me know if you have any questions. Also, subscribe to the channel to see more Python programming content.